Hi everyone! If you've followed my channel for some time, you know that Senko Hanabi are one of my favorite fireworks. I went to Japan to learn how to make these uniquely Japanese sparklers, which starts by taking a tiny scoop of powder and placing it into a fold at the end of a strip of tissue paper. The sparkler is then rolled with a very precise technique, starting by containing the powder in a tightly packed pellet at the tip. Now, if I do this first step properly, I can then transition from forming the pellet into forming a neck at its base, which consists of several close turns of the tissue paper to reinforce this section. Now, once I have the neck formed, I can stretch out the angle of the tissue paper to continue rolling the rest of the sparkler. And if I do this whole process with enough tension on the paper, I should end up with a stem that is quite stiff. Now, I am about to do something that you should never do with fireworks. That is to light this in proximity to a pile of the very powder it was made from. The reason why I am doing this will become apparent shortly. Don't try this at home or anywhere. A Senko Hanabi starts by forming a molten drop at the tip, which soon begins to emit large branching sparks. These sparks can shoot out a significant distance and burst in a brilliant display. The first stage is followed by this much more densely packed display of branching sparks that are smaller but much more frequent. And then the final stage is a tiny display of non-branching sparks. This final stage can last minutes as the glowing ember on the tip of the sparkler slowly climbs upward consuming the rest of the paper until it finally slows down and stops. This is not an ordinary Senko Hanabi, and this is not an ordinary fireworks powder. If it had been, any one of the sparks could have caused an explosion, and you certainly could not do something like this. There were no editing tricks in what you just saw. I really did roll this sparkler using this particular powder in front of me, the same powder that I used to put the sparkler out. Like I said, don't try this at home, if only because it would be a very bad safety habit to get into around fireworks. But as we'll see in the rest of this video, I really was not in any danger. In fact, the powder in these particular sparklers is less flammable than the paper they're rolled in. Now, big disclaimer, if you are in Japan or any part of the world where Senko Hanabi sparklers are available, there is a 100% chance that those Senko Hanabi will contain a very flammable firework mixture like any other commercially made firework. So, how is it possible that the <laughs> homemade sparklers in front of me could be made from such a poorly flammable powder? A Senko Hanabi is unique. It's the only firework I know of where all of the powder burns completely long before the display of sparks actually starts. The ingredients are usually a chemical that adds oxygen to the flame, potassium nitrate, and then you also have sulfur and carbon, both fuels that in the presence of added oxygen become extremely flammable. The powder usually ignites, burns in its entirety, and then leaves behind a glowing mass, which transforms into a drop, and only then do we get sparks. The first part, the part where the powder actually catches fire, is not the important bit. It's what's left behind, the glowing substance which melts together into a drop. That's where all the sparks come from. Oxidizers like potassium nitrate are what make fireworks so flammable, to the point of being explosive. But in a Senko Hanabi, we only use it because of what it leaves behind in the ash. And it turns out there are other chemicals that can do the same job, that actually reduce flammability rather than increasing it. In this case, I'm using potassium bicarbonate, which ironically finds another purpose as the main ingredient in certain types of dry chemical fire extinguishers. It's closely related chemically to baking soda. 
That explains why this powder can extinguish a burning sparkler. About 60% of its composition is a fire suppressant. In fact, if you try to light this pile on fire with a torch, it will self-extinguish. It can't even sustain a flame. Brief pause here to introduce this video's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant specializes in online learning courses for math, science, and computer science, with a heavy focus on making their courses interactive. I've always appreciated this about Brilliant because the interactivity keeps you engaged with what you're learning. When you take a course on Brilliant, they give you one or two pieces of information at a time, and then present you with an interactive problem that connects the new information to what you've already learned. It's fun to learn a new subject when you can see how the pieces fit together in this way and intuitively understand their function. I recommend the Scientific Thinking course if you need ideas for where to start with Brilliant. It's a really fun one, and I think it gives you a good introduction to how Brilliant does things. Head to brilliant.org forward slash Nighthawk to get started with a free trial, and the first 200 people to use that link can also get 20% off an annual membership. For yourself, or maybe as a gift for someone else. Highly recommended. Now there are lots of different variations on this powder mixture that can work in a Senko Hanabi. But one of my favorites is four parts potassium bicarbonate, two parts sulfur, and one part charcoal, all measured on a precise digital scale. It will not work to measure the ingredients any other way. It has to be by weight. All of these ingredients can be store-bought, but the best result comes from using homemade pine charcoal. I make this by taking a few split pieces of pine wood, sealing them inside of a steel can, and then placing the can into the hottest part of a fire. The can is not airtight, so the gases vent out of the top as the wood is carbonized. You can tell when the charcoal is done when the gas stops coming out of the can. At that point, take it out of the fire, seal up the cracks with a wet paper towel, and wait for it to cool down. Perfect charcoal every time. The charcoal needs to be ground into a super fine powder for Senko Hanabi. The other ingredients should also be a fine powder, but it doesn't matter quite as much, because both the sulfur and the potassium bicarbonate will melt when heated. The charcoal will not melt, so whatever particle size you start with is what actually ends up floating around in the drop of the Senko Hanabi. The finer it is, the better the sparkler will perform. Once the charcoal is ground up, I can then add the other ingredients mix them thoroughly together, and then the powder will be ready for use. In order to make this very poorly flammable powder work in a Senko Hanabi, you can't light it with an ordinary lighter. You have to use a torch flame. Since we can't rely on the powder to actually burn and heat itself, the flame does all of the work, melting the ingredients into a drop. Only then can it start smoldering of its own accord as it reacts with air. If you stop applying heat too soon, it will once again just go out. But if you melt all the ingredients together before removing the heat, the results are awesome. Like I said, this last stage can last for a long time. Sometimes if I want to end it early, I like to do this. <laughs> This is kind of a big deal if you have an interest in fireworks. These are the only fireworks I know of that do not use any explosive ingredients in their construction. 
In some ways, they're more similar to a candle or to an incense stick than to other fireworks. As far as I know, all of the ingredients are legal to purchase anywhere in the world, and mixing them together, if anything, makes them safer than they were to begin with. For example, this powder is definitely less flammable than an ordinary bag of charcoal, which is one of its key ingredients. I learned of the possibility to use these non-oxidizing ingredients for Senko Hanabi from Dr. Frederick Vandersift, a medical doctor and fireworks researcher in Belgium. He has several excellent articles on Senko Hanabi, which I will link to in the video description below. I recently participated with Dr. Vandersift, along with Dr. Barry Sturman, who is a chemist out of Australia, Bonnie Kosanki, co-founder of the Journal of Pyrotechnics, and Mark Anticole of the YouTube channel Guillotined Chemistry, in presenting a Senko Hanabi seminar for the Western Pyrotechnics Association and the PGI, Pyrotechnics Guild International. If you are a member of either organization, you can watch that seminar online, which I would highly recommend if you are interested in these sparklers. This is an ongoing area of research with a rich history, and it's likely that more new things will soon be discovered. Already, I have more that I can show you in this video. Once I learned that potassium bicarbonate was successful to make a Senko Hanabi, I wondered about using regular baking soda, sodium bicarbonate. Here's what I came up with. Seven parts baking soda, four parts sulfur, and two parts charcoal. Prepared in the same way as the previous composition, and all measured by weight. This gives us an incredibly interesting result. Sodium emits a very bright and distinct yellow glow, which allows us to see little jets of gas being ejected from the drop, like solar flares. It looks like the corona of a sun, and then it also begins to emit sparks. They're stringier and branchless than normal Senko Hanabi sparks, but I love the effect. The sound they make is subtle and really pleasant to listen to. <laughs> These baking soda Senkos don't burn for very long, but I still like making them. Nothing else looks like this. Well, before we go, I'd like to remind you all that I have a community video response playlist featured on my channel homepage where you can submit videos of your own that are responses to my projects and have them featured right there on my homepage. Get some more views, things like that, and give me some enjoyment to see you taking my projects, running with them, creating something new. Be safe if you do so. If you click through to my channel and look at that playlist, you'll find the instructions to submit videos and some brief rules about doing so. With that, I want to thank you so much for watching. You can leave me comments below. I read all of them. I really enjoy reading those also. And I'll see you next time.